So the question of the time seems to be, what are you doing with your Wuhan flu extra time off? If your jobs are non-essential and you've got nothing much else to do, and you've lost a couple streams of income, what are you doing with that time? Well, what follows is what I've been doing with mine. Alright, since this basement was just concrete, I do prefer to actually use some of this foam board. And I'm not using the heavier duty structural stuff. You look at this, it's basically polystyrene beads, expanded polystyrene beads. EPB, I guess they call it. But this one's got a face. This side's plastic with all their writing and stuff on it, and their R value. This side's foil. Now the theory I'm going with is that you want the foil towards the inside of your space so it reflects all the temperature that you have inside the space back into it. Now if you need more about that theory and why it works and why it doesn't work, go check out Matt Reisinger on The Build Show and Jordan Smith as well. They're just doing a house recently where they talked about why you would put the foil towards the inside of your conditioned space. I'm also going to be using some standard Pink, Pink Panther stuff. The Owens Corning makes that. Sill plate stuff, I'll show you how I'm going to use that too. The whole idea is to actually insulate everything as well as I can. I'm using spray foam up in places too. In between some of the joints you can see it. This mirror I've mainly used it. And I'm getting a, a tight a seal that I can off of this you know, 40 year old place that I'm living in and updating. Now when you're doing foam board you find this, and this is Loctite's PL300 foam board. Comes out blue. With this particular foam, I don't know if it really matters because it's got that plastic on the on the back side of it. But with the, your heavier duty construction foams, the pink or the blue stuff, regular construction adhesive will melt into it and tear it up and it won't glow together like you might want it to. Ask me how I know. Something I learned way long time ago as a constructor back in the uh, 90s. But this foam board stuff, it doesn't eat into the foam, and it does glue it up pretty dang well, because these sheets are nice and secure to the walls, and then the foam, spray foam stuff is actually double insured that they're there. One of the reasons you'd want to put this up against the wall is if you just went straight stud to the wall, and especially when I'm going to be using steel studs, you've got a thermal bridge there, and especially metal. Metal is a great conductor of energy. And you don't want that thermal bridge bringing whatever the temperature is outside, whether it's hot or cold, to your inside, whether you want hot or cold inside. So by doing this, you're sacrificing about an inch. And you can look. Yeah, they tell you what the, the R value of this stuff is. What is it? Somewhere around 4. I can't see one right now that shows me. But it's like 3.9 or 4, something like that for just an inch. But you can look into what polystyrene beads actually do. A lot of theory behind it, but the best illustration I can think of is a styrofoam cup. When you put hot coffee in it or you put uh, cold liquid in it, a glass with cold liquid on a hot and humid day will have condensation on the outside of it. A styrofoam cup, not usually. So that actually helps a lot with that, with the moisture transference and all of that. I will be putting that into the walls as well, but obviously my walls are only going to be, if your eyes are good enough, this is just a 2x3 wall. 
it's not full two by four and I like steel because they're fast to put up and they're nice and straight and true and I only want two by threes down here these are nothing to do with structure they're all about just giving me a curtain wall in this basement so I can finish the space so about four dollars a stud depending on your area it could be different totally worth it to me to get me a straight and true wall where I can do the inch standoff and have about the same wall that I would have with a 2x4 like this structural shear wall in here is I will take this and I'll put sheets of it across this wall as well the other thing about that's thermal insulation sound insulation is the other thing if I remember correctly your, your fiberglass tile insulation will block high pitch noises where your foam board style is going to block the low pitch noises so both your bass and your treble and since there is going to be a den entertainment room type area in here and keep the room totally silent especially from the mechanical room as well but try to keep this a nice silent bedroom that's a good place to sleep without getting bothered by mechanics or somebody watching a movie but yeah so thermal and sound insulation is what I'm after here so when you're looking at framing with steel studs, a couple differences in tools and techniques that you'll need. These clamps right here, two, three, two of them minimum, I like four of them around, but that's going to help you clamp your pieces together when you screw them together because you've got, this is the track, you notice it's just a simple track, that's top and bottom, so it takes place of top and bottom plates in your framing, whereas you look at the frame with these ones, they have a return here so that gives a little bit more structure that will hold up the drywall that's all it's got to do is hold up the drywall the insulation you get holes in here I need to get the clips for them but you can get little insulation clips there for your electrical to go through you can put plumbing through this stuff too but most guys that do the plumbing will take a hole saw and put out their holes where they want them and then you get clips for that as well and it's a little small for three quarter inch pecs Half inch pecs might make it, but most people wanting to do that would actually come in with with a full on hole saw. Putting it together, I'm going to do something a little different than what most people might. If you've done steel stud framing before, you know this is not the screw most people use, and there's a reason I'm going after this one. I don't have any of the other ones to show you, but the regular button head style ones, the little black ones most people use, this has a flatter pan style profile so you're less likely to see any of the pop throughs with the drywall that you get with the other style it has nothing to do with this being the uh, you know silver zinc coated type stuff I don't really care about that as much as I care about that head profile right there that's what I'm looking for by using these screws three quarter inch self tappers you know, I don't need a three quarter inch a half inch would have been just fine and most of those little black ones are you know about a half inch or or so it's just this is what I could get in those five pound boxes at Homey Depot film. The way I usually start is I'll start with a top track and I'll get it up there on the joists where I want it and then cut all my studs to length, get the bottom track secured to it and then I'll take a level up against, you know, four foot level up against each stud before I go and ram set them down with one of those simple ram sets. You could use this ram set or you could use tap cons, whatever tool you've got to actually secure it to the concrete. These usually work pretty fast and well for me, so I go with them. I've got this insulation out because I'm going to put that under the bottom track. Again, making sure I don't have that thermal bridge from floor to wall. And just trying to keep everything more temperate down here. That also would help seal out you know, insects and things like that, spiders, ants, whatever almost forgot one of the points I like about this about steel studs instead of having to have instead of having to have saws and all kinds of stuff making all kinds of sawdust you really can get away with just a set of snips um, if you're doing a lot of stuff and you do a lot the same length yeah you can do chop saws things like that abrasive cutoff wheels and I've got one upstairs if I feel like I need it I will otherwise I'm just gonna measure and I'm gonna snip it because you just snip the side legs and bend the other one over you're good to go um, a lot of things you can do with the steel that you can't do as fast with wood. And I don't know if I'm the best person to show all those things. It's been a while since I've built with this stuff, but we'll see how good my memory is. 25 gauge, I think. I think it's really thin. Galvanized coated for corrosion resistance. 
if you needed structural in commercial, when I worked commercial construction, you'd absolutely get structural steel studs, and they're a totally different profile, way thicker. Fun thing is my basement in there and here, this is seven foot two. That side of the basement is seven foot eight. It's another one of those instances where I'd really love to just beat the architect for doing stupid stuff like that. Which means the living room right above us is actually a sunken floor from the rest of the floor plan, and it's just, it's... Those dreamy architects thinking, yay, let's do this, it'll be great. No, it's not. I can't stand when they do that crap. I would beat them if I could. All right. The seal foam is down. I don't know if you can kind of see that on, if that gets good enough. But I'm just putting a little bit of W's of glue on the underside of it, that same foam glue. Because I don't want burning through this stuff. I want it to still be effective, so I decided to use that glue. That's going to get my first two steel stud walls done. All the way there. I've put up my first track. And those three-quarter screws seem to have plenty of bite to actually hold it there. So I think I'm just going to stick with the three-quarter inch screws and do it that way. I'm putting two per joist. Should be nice and neat. Um, now I could have cut right here and split them between it but since this is sheet metal you don't have to worry about that as much you can join the two pieces of sheet metal together just by doing some creative snipping and that's what I'm about to do another note leather gloves are mandatory when working with this stuff you'll slice yourself open real quick real easy on these things And that right there is why it's easier to work with steel. Because you can just scab stuff together, slice dice, and get it all put together that way. I'm having a hard time getting something on the back side of that one, but that's all plenty strong enough. And I'm loving how this wall, it's no surprise it ain't straight. If I was really cool, I would do my chalk lines going all the way across and set off of chalk lines, but I'm just kind of following the lay, the lay of the land on the walls here. Because the concrete behind here, every two foot section of their forms, it moved. It's freaking nothing straight about it, so I'll adjust there. The steel will actually keep a pretty straight line on its own. It's pretty hard to bend this stuff out of shape. You have to be trying pretty good. But just because you got four, you know, you got the two different angles on there, the three sides of it anyway. Alright, first wall framed up. Now, I've got all of this tied into structure already, but I haven't tied anything down there. And this is my way to go about doing it. I don't know how much light I got up here. But before I start ram setting things in, I'll take a four foot level to this. And I'll move that bottom plate where I need it before I shoot it in. And on this one, I'm just using the, the ram sets with little 22 cartridges and the nails. And these things are bludgeoningly simple. Cartridge goes in there, nail goes in there, close it up, beat it with a hammer, and it shoots it on into the concrete. I'm just using some one inch ones because don't need that much of an anchor for this wall. It's not structural. It's not doing anything other than holding up drywall and making the place finished. The other thing to, interesting to note with this basement is you see how much space I've got down here behind the studs. And that space comes to where I'm actually touching the wall here. But if I shoot with my T-square there off the studs and the joists, I'm pretty freaking square. The wall, like I said, these steel tracks, they will hold you pretty straight. This just shows you how bad the concrete's out. But these studs are nice and straight. You notice how strong they get once they're in. They don't flop around at all. And you're just putting four screws, you know, two each side, top and bottom. Once you get all the drywall in, then it's all kinds of strong and ready. But for these hammer shots, most definitely eye protection and most definitely ear protection like he's doing. So 
actually pretty good where it's at. All right, ready? <laughs> I think it drove it all the way into the concrete. I don't know. I'm having trouble. We probably should treat this just like a gun. Boom, there we go. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, here we go. Give me the boxes. Okay. Okay, by no means am I giving you a comprehensive how-to of steel stud framing. If you know how to do wood framing, and you know how to run a simple pair of snips or shears, you can do this. A couple of details I did want to highlight. I've done it two different ways. When you take the track to make your top and bottom plates for your window openings, this is one way. You can see I cut it there and bent it up and so I've got screws on four sides and that holds it in nice and tight. So that's one way to go about it. Obviously you do your regular studs there. You don't have to do cripple and jack studs and king studs and that kind of stuff. I did there. I don't remember why I did that. I just did. I had short pieces. Generally though I was following my 16 on center. You can see the marks. But again, just a slice, a bend and then screw it all in there and it's nice and tight and that'll hold drywall. The other thing to mention, notice up top here I have another piece of stud going there because this open bay you gotta think ahead just like you would with wood framing where's your drywall gonna attach to? Now it has somewhere to attach to and that's simply you can see the openings that are in the factory so that's about that wide so I'm putting that much behind the stud, that much overhang giving as much overhang as possible but I just come up on in here and just put screws in through it and it's nice and tight, it'll hold the drywall, it'll give it backing and I've done that all along here <sighs> did wood to wood here so I put another 2x4 below all this framing just so I've got again that drywall has somewhere to go same thing here, did I? no that one's screwed in, okay I just couldn't get one over there this, this corner's a mess and I'm not even sure that's going to stay but let's get over here to the second detail of how to actually do your plates. So I call this a bottom plate or the, the header of the window bottom plate, whatever you want to call it. There's the top plate of the window sill. But you can see this one, again I measured past, so from outside of stud to outside of stud. But here I sliced along there. And so I've got a tab here and I've got a tab bent up there. Same thing, it's four screws. I'm just playing around with that one, just see which one's stronger, and I don't really see a noticeable difference between either of them. They're both there. Um, you can do it either way. And that's the cool thing about metal, is you're putting things together, and you feel like you need something more, you just make it. Just like this. This little... I wanted to tie into the wood framing, and make sure this wall's got more to it. So I just make it. 
up here too, just simple. I took pieces of this track, sliced and diced, so I've got an L bracket and boom, I'm there. Because I'm not too keen about how that ties in there. There's the gas line going up there to the meter. So I don't really have much to tie into up there. But by tying it into this wall here and here, I've given it some stiffness. Now I still have to go and ram set all my concrete nails down there. Check the plumb of the wall. But yeah, um, you know, connecting different places together. It's just scabbing it all together, slice and dice, make things fit. And then boom, punch your screws in, you're good to go. Here, two little tiny, I don't know what you call those little walls, but you can see it's the gas pipe that's in between. It's a small wall to hide that. Another small wall here to hide the main trunk line of this HVAC that runs here. And I did decide to go 2x4 on this part because wood to wood. I just wanted to be stronger there without having to do a full wall like this. If I just do 2 bys, I've got it screwed into the existing 2x4 wall. We're good to go. I can hang sheetrock across that. It's not that big a span. I don't think it's even two feet. I didn't put a tape on it. It's over 16. You can see that much. Because this is a 15 inch line. But it might be 20 something inches. I don't know. But yeah, so I am doing a mix. I've got all my steel and I've got some two buys because there are places I need two buys. Like here, this baluster area, I'm going to tear all that down and build the wall up. And so that's all going to be wall there. Alright, so to do this detail, I've already done the cuts. You make a cut here, make a cut here. And a set of lines of pliers is really handy to use as a break, basically. Pinch it there a little bit, go to the other end, pinch it a little bit. Go to the center, pinch it a little bit, then you fold it up. And boom, you're there. And then that slips on over there, over there. And there's your sill piece, and all you got to do is get the screws in. When doing blocking and backing and steel studs with wood, which I highly re recommend you do, you will need these two saws. Well, you could get away with a regular circular saw to do the same business, but this makes it faster. A chop saw to cut to length, and then a table saw to make your notch, because the back side of your average steel stud, see how it has that lip right there? You've got to get that notch to go into there. So in your stud, that notch fits into there and that gets you flat. So again, and blocking and backing can be used for anything you need to put cabinetry, trim. I don't usually worry about trim as much, but cabinetry, shelves, hooks, anything like that that you would need. You want the wood to be able to actually get you a good solid bite into it because steel won't always do that for you. If you follow me on Instagram, you're probably oh, almost up to date with where I'm at right now. This wall is definitely all the way in. I put some plywood on it because I had it. Gives it a little bit of sheer strength, but I'm also looking to put some solid material between this, the bedroom, and that, the mechanical room. On the other side, it's already one sheet, one layer of drywall sheet on there. I'm going to put another one just to make it even more solid. A little bit of uh, insulation I had is up in there. A little bit it's around this toilet pipe. This is all framed out. Got blocking and backing in here. So I can put shelves in here to make a little bookshelf nook in there. You can see the blocking and backing going everywhere. Now when you do steel stud framing, yes it's lighter, it's faster to work with, and one of the things I noticed too is it's quieter. So you're not always running the saws and doing things there to make it work, but honestly there's a strong argument to be made in this particular case to do the outer curtain walls in steel but these demising walls in between what is the bathroom on that side the bedroom and closet on this side a linen closet the entryway I could have done all of that in 2x4 and not had to do as much blocking and backing and it probably would have saved me time 
So you could flip a coin on that one. You're going to do work either way. If you do it with steel like I did, which I did because I was just going, you're going to have to come back and put the blocking and backing in. And I did so much in there so that I can get all of the levels of shelving in that linen closet. Here I've got specific pieces of furniture that this space is designed for. And then closet rod and shelf up above there. You come into the bathroom, you got to pay attention to, obviously I'm going cabinet height all the way around. But you see I've got other blocking and backing for medicine cabinetry, cabinet above the toilet, grab bars here, for the plumber to put the water fixtures for both the sink and the toilet. You got to pay attention to all that. And you can see I'm already, even though this video is mostly about, this video is mostly about the uh, framing, I'm already got a head start on where my boxes are. For electrical, one of the things to note is a standard box, you're going to have to use a shallow one on 2x3 framing. Yet another argument to go 2x4 in this wall, if I'd have done all, all wood. You also want to make sure you, you buck out everything you've got for doorways, so you can get good door um, attachment to your structure. Makes it a lot easier when you're doing hinges. And I did the top as well, because I tend to shim at the top of my door frames. I know a lot of people don't. I do. I like my doors very solid. For the shower, since there's only one shower there, or one point, you know, the glass shower door I intend to putting there, I just put them there. Built a bench in there out of steel. All of this, both outside and inside, is going to end up getting covered with a uh, hardy backer, quarter inch, and then tile after that. And have a fart fan vent going there all the way to the outside. Basic bathroom stuff. Light fixtures for the bathroom will be up here and here. A GF GFCI outlet there. Minimal minimal space for a bathroom down here, but it'll be a nice one. Out here in the den area, I took down that crap that was there. Those balusters framed in a good solid wall. So now that's about as solid as it gets. And then did the built-in over here, which again, same thing. I could have built it all out of wood and may have been faster and easier that way, but I did a mix and it'll work. Obviously for the cabinetry, I'm going to go there. I've got top and bottom on those sides too so that I can secure the after finishes cabinets that I'm going to build and put there, shelves more, more than cabinets. But it's all ready to go. Up here I've built troughs. That I'll and short two boxes. I'll get two boxes for the electrical and two of these fluorescent fixtures. I've got one for this side, and this one's gonna move to that side. I'll drywall all that before I can put those fixtures in, so pretty much ready. Um, I don't like how that happened, but that's the way it is with my water supply. Main line for the buildings there, and it doesn't really come into the structure enough for my liking, so I had to box out a little bit. That'll be fine. That'll keep it protected from drywall screws and everything else. So it'll work. I have two can lights back here that'll be on a dimmer switch. You know, you got to think about all those things when you're framing. Figure out where you're going to put things and what you need for backing and, and blocking. The TV, definitely, if I can, I can put a 65 inch here. But you got to make sure you've got that ready to go as well. But this is basically what I've been doing with my time off due to the Wuhan flu and that's also why you're not seeing much in the way of truck videos and so I'm doing this all in one collage video because I don't tend to get a whole lot of views on what I do in construction I'm not doing anything special I learn from the guys that do special things like R&R buildings or the build show crazy framer a whole bunch of people that do all kinds of cool stuff I learn from them even though I've been swinging a hammer since I was five making money at it since I was 16 kind of got out of full-time construction business and went other directions in life back in 2008 but if you want to see the day-to-day -day of what's going on and more shots here and there of what I do with the trucks you definitely need to follow Instagram and like I said this video is more for family that are curious about what we're doing and how we're taking care of it um, steel structure you do that you notice back here I've got steel behind it instead of wood that's for the drywall. That's all that's for. Up there, same thing. You know, I put the steel structure up there. It's just for drywall. 
not going to hold anything more than the drywall weight and your drywall fine thread screws will go to that stuff just fine but down here where I expect to have weight and need to be able to attach cabinetry because I am going to do built-in cabinets down here then you need the wood so your screws will actually hold but yeah follow along on Instagram and you'll see as this build progresses um, probably as the weather gets warmer and we're still under quarantine I'm gonna start getting back to the trucks there's some things I need to get done on both of them so that contents coming as I get to it again this is a hobby for me I do how-to stuff I do what I'm doing but a lot of it is basically taking care of what the family's curious about but if you've come this far and watched all of this appreciate you watching and we'll catch you on the next one